by the pitch and sailed up and in. Might have got it up. And Dawson is head. down. He did. I yeah. think he was beaten by that ball. In baseball, the occurrence of batters getting hit by a pitch is a natural one and part of the game. The victims either take their base or take to a fight. Some hitters might be removed from the contest as a health precaution. On a rare instance, some are stretched out and make a hospital visit. Overall, the acts are not seen as long-term dangers. Only once in the history of Major League Baseball has a player died from being hit by a pitch. The key figures in that game, which took place 100 years ago, are still talked about and forever linked. Monday afternoon in New York on August 16, 1920 was an overcast one, the air full of rain and humidity. The host Yankees, who played their home games at the Polo Grounds, were in third place and looking to catch up to the Chicago White Sox in hopes of capturing the franchise's first ever pennant. In the way, and in second place, their opponent Cleveland Indians, who were making their third and final visit that season. Although the stadium's capacity was 38,000, just under 22,000 were counted that day. Ray Chapman, Cleveland's shortstop and the best in the game at the time, led off the fifth inning with his team up 3-0. Carl Mays, the New York right-hander, delivered his pitch, a rising fastball with an underhand sweeping motion. By several accounts, Chapman, who had a habit of crowding the plate, never saw it coming and the ball struck him square in his left temple. It was the sixth time he had been hit that year. The ball bounced back into the field of play and Mays, perhaps thinking it struck the hitter's bat, fielded it cleanly. Chapman attempted to run to first base, but collapsed before he reached it. After a doctor's examination with players from both teams surrounding his prone body in worry, he attempted to walk off the field. On the long journey back to the clubhouse, the entrance position past the center field wall, Chapman collapsed a second time and was then carried off. He was admitted to a local hospital where his condition worsened by evening. The game continued with Cleveland hanging on for a 4-3 victory New York scored all of its runs in the ninth inning. Mays picked up his ninth loss of the season, and the Indian Stan Kowaleski went the distance for his 19th win. Chapman fell into a coma, and the decision to operate was made that night. After an hour-long surgery, a large piece of Chapman's skull was removed from his left side. A discovery was made that he had damage to both sides of his brain and severe blood clotting to his sinuses. The soon-to-be father died a few hours later on August 17. He was just 31. Mays was absolved of any blame by a New York district attorney, though there was talk around the league of teams boycotting all games he was to pitch in the rest of the season. It should be noted that he did have the reputation of being a nasty pitcher in both his form and general attitude. He was known for roughing up baseballs, making them dirty and difficult to see and therefore hit. There was further talk of prosecuting Mays, but many consider the tragedy an accident, and he went on to play through the 1929 season. Although fully exonerated, he endured constant public criticism following the event. Part of the negativity was due to his constantly running mouth, putting everyone from the umpire to Chapman himself to blame for the incident. Cleveland captured the pennant two games ahead of the White Sox and four ahead of New York, on their way to winning the 1920 World Series, its first in franchise history. The Yankees would win the American League pennant each of the following three seasons. Carl May said later in life that he felt deserving of Hall of Fame inclusion. He won 20 games five times and pitched in four World Series, though accused of taking part in throwing the 1921 Classic. Ray Chapman played parts of nine seasons, all with Cleveland. A career 278 hitter, he led the league in walks and runs scored in 1918. It has been recorded that four players were killed in the minors between 1910 and 1920. Blame went to the fact that baseballs were allowed to be scuffed and colored. A rule soon went into place that stated once a ball became dirty, it was to be taken out of play. Another change went into effect in the New York ballpark as patrons were no longer allowed to sit in the center field bleachers of the polo grounds. Had May's pitch gotten lost in the white shirts and dark suits of patrons? Whatever the cause, the game was about to undergo a major change. Pitchers lost their advantage of scuffed balls, 
The orbs stayed bright and were made livelier by the way the yarn inside was wound. It was about to become a hitter's world.